talking about was we were talking about solids. And definitely on the test, whenever you guys have it, not next week, but the following week, there'll be some on this, not a major point, but it'll be on there, uh, solids. Okay, can you guys see this? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so 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 I've already went over this. So we, just a quick review. So we talked about solids. There's two main categories, crystalline, which is what we're gonna learn about. One, that uh, a solid that has internal order and then amorphous one that lacks internal order, which I'm gonna talk about just briefly. Briefly, so our study is going to be on crystalline solids, and again, we're, we're kind of just reviewing real fast. And then we talked about ionic solids; they're kind of the most familiar one, the ones that we talk about most often. Okay, and so we went over all this, so I don't need to spend hardly any time on this. So, solid number one is an ionic solid, metal and non-metal solid. Number two is a molecular solid. So these are two non-metals, and we said they have strong intermolecular forces but they have weak intramolecular forces. So they are they could be a solid liquid and a gas, but they, they're gonna melt fairly easy. They're not conductive at all. And then where we left off was on covalent network solids, a network of covalent bonds with no intermolecular bonds. Okay, and, the, and so we're now we're still under, so here is, here is solid number three, a covalent network solid. Okay, and there's, and this really, so, so, so some things on this you should note, okay. Covalent network solids is just, an, is exactly that. It's a network of elements connected, and it doesn't make individual units exactly like an ionic compound, exactly like an ionic compound does. It doesn't have a, an individual unit, and it, it's, it's very, has a high melting point. It's very hard. It's a strong force inside. But it doesn't conduct electricity. So if you look on top, there's two really good examples, diamond and graphite. Okay, so I'm going to slow down here for a second. And uh, for those that are taking notes, I'll give you a chance to... Um, copy this down. So, again, both of these are un, in this category of a covalent network solid. The uh, and diamond, diamond and graphite are both made out of pure. They're both made out of pure carbon. And uh, but the difference is is how they're connected. So both of these are covalent network solid. And this goes back now to chapter a little bit what we did in chapter especially chapter nine. Graphite, if you look there, graphite is sp3 hybridized tetrahedral structure, so four electron domains. It's a non-conductor of electricity, so the electrons, the electrons cannot move around at all. And and they're very it's very hard. So, so diamond is made out of uh, pure carbon. Now graphite, if you're writing with a pencil right now, you're writing again with pure carbon, but it's, it's the picture on the bottom. Uh, it's sp2 hybridized with one unhybridized piece. So what we've got is three electron domains with one of those being a double bond. So it's overlapping p orbitals are weak bonds. And these p orbitals form delocalized molecular bonds, making graphite conductive. So graphite's a little bit different. Uh, and so here's another picture of 
are just kind of an illustration of <clears throat> graphite and what, what happens in graphite. And so again, this is what graphite looks like. So if you again are writing with a pencil right now, you are truly just leaving carbon on the paper. This, those sheets of carbon. So you, what you have is you just have sheets of carbon on each other. And so as you're writing, you're just leaving those on the page. So it's like a stack of papers. So it's sheets of carbon. And in the middle, they have unhybridized P, P orbitals. The sheets are held together by London dispersion forces. But the, the sheets are held together by London dispersion forces. They're very weak pi bonds. So they come apart. They come apart very easily. Now, again, all these are in the category of covalent network. And when we're done with, with all the solids, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to kind of do an, a, a quick review of everything. So you kind of have the main points for, uh, for everything there. So these are in, in so very strong intermolecular, very strong, technically not an intermolecular force, an intramolecular force, not an intermolecular force. Uh, very hard, high melting points. They uh, are not conductive to electricity very good at all. And they consist really of individual elements. These are, these are um, atomic solids. And it's really carbon, silicon, and germanium all in the same column. Okay, so here's a page I'm just going to go through. Really, you know, for here, to me, if you're taking notes, silicon, again, silicon and carbon are in the same uh, column on the periodic table. And so they're going to behave the same. So, so uh, SiO2 is what that is, is that's really dirt. It's, it's quartz. And it's a strong solid network. So, so silicon too is able to form uh, pi bonds. So again, I'm just going to skip through this page real fast because the key thing is again, carbon, silicon, germanium are really the only elements that are involved in covalent network solids. Okay, so we had ionic solids, molecular solids, and then under atomic solids, which are going to be a subcategory, and again, I'll go over all this, are uh, covalent network solids. So that was number three. So ionic solids, molecular solids, covalent network solids, and now metals. Okay, so metals bonding can be described one of two ways. So metals are almost all solids. So that tells you, just like on that quiz question, that they're held together. They're held together very strong. They uh, have, they conduct electricity. They're flexible. They, uh, they're, they're malleable. And what happens in metals, this goes back to electron configurations. And uh, if you remember metals and, and the elements want to fill their outer shell with electrons. And so metals always have one or two or three extra electrons. They have too many electrons. And so they want to give those up. And that's what kind of accounts for this, the electron C model. And uh, so what you have is you have a positive nuclei surrounded by like a, a gel of electrons, a negative gel, and that holds it all together. And it's held together pretty strong. So again, I like, and this is the way I always teach it in first year chem, the electron C model. So you have the positive nuclei surrounded by this free moving sea of electrons. And I read, I'm just reading in my notes, it's a gel of negative the electrons that holds everything together. 
so that they're delocalized electrons and the electrons wander again because the metals want to give up they have <clears throat> they have extra electrons so the mobile electrons this is in metal so the mobile electrons cause metals to be conductive to heat and electricity and this is also why metals uh, are flexible because of this uh, sea of free moving electrons there's one great example of um, a metal that is a liquid. Okay, all the other metals are solid, but there's one famous, chemistry famous metal that is a, is a liquid. Does anybody know it? Mercury. Mercury, very good. That's right. So mercury is the only, if I were to go back to the periodic table over here on the wall, you'd see mercury would be in blue. Okay, so ionic solids, molecular solids, then under uh, <clears throat> under atomic solids, we have covalent network and metals. Okay, part of uh, metals is something I don't think I'm going to hold you to, so I'm going to go over this fairly quickly, is the concept of an alloy. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Again, if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. But an alloy, and uh, this is in first year chem, if you guys remember – um doing the penny lab and of course if i had if you had chemistry last year i'm trying to remember we may not have gotten to it uh if you had it two years ago we would have it's actually a Karen, did we do the penny lab last year where we took the penny and make him look like gold yeah we did we got to that okay that was this that's what this is that's was under this technically what we made was brass so so this is kind of under metals, just kind of a almost a four-year information thing. But metal alloys are a mixture of elements that has metallic properties. And, and what they do in chemistry is they um, they <clears throat> they have a, a metal that's expensive or is there's not a lot of it. And so what they do is they alloy other uh, metals. So they take other metals and they combine them, which have similar properties, and it's just a, a way to be maybe to, to save something or make something less expensive. So metal alloys and mixture of elements that has metallic properties, a substitutional alloy or elements of similar size. And, you know, I'm thinking on the AP test, as ridiculous as it is, there has been a year or two where there's been a multiple choice question kind of about this. And it has to do with really flexibility. So a substitute, and I'll explain what the question was, but a substitutional alloy or elements of similar sizes mix. And so what we made in first year chem was brass, look like gold, copper and zinc. And if you look at the upper right hand figure there, that is what it looked like. The copper and the zinc, copper is element 29, zinc is element 30, almost the same size. Sterling silver, silver and copper, same thing, and then solder for welding, tin, and antimony. But <clears throat> compare that to an interstitial alloy where smaller atoms of one element fit in the holes between the larger elements. So, so steel is a really good example of that. Iron and carbon. So if you look at the diagram on the right, that is uh, what steel looks like. Okay, so you have a bigger, a bigger atom and a smaller atom. So, so here was the question that I've seen a couple times on the on the AP test, and it has to do with flexibility. So if you compare brass or a substitutional alloy to steel and interstitial alloy, which would be more flexible? And the answer would be the brass because they're similar size so that the atoms are going to move around each other. What the carbon does in steel is, is it, it doesn't allow the flexibility. So uh, just for your information, I'll just read these. Some other things like in the Olympics, maybe they'll have the Olympics this summer. I hear it's still up in the air. But if you win, if an athlete wins a bronze medal, a man or woman wins a bronze medal, that's an alloy of copper and tin. Stainless steel for surgical equipment is 81% iron, 18% chromium, 1% nickel. Uh, I have above sterling silver. So if somebody as important is coming over for dinner, that is 
92.5% silver, 7.5% copper. A dental al amalgam, a filling, which unfortunately Mr. Woods got a lot of them, 70% silver, 18% 10, 10% copper. Okay. And then the last one's kind of, and, and there is kind of, that illustration is kind of showing you what I'm talking about, what an alloy does. It kind of, uh, it, especially an interstitial alloy, it, it, it makes it, uh, firms everything up. And then, and, and to be honest with you, this one always kind of baffles me, group 18 solids. Well, group 18 are the noble gases. And so they're rarely solids. They're only going to be solids at very, very, um, at very, very cold temperatures. But, but anyways, our book presents that. Okay, and this will be a good place. You can see a homework, a good problem to do is number ninety-nine. So let me give you a second, and I want to do a quick summary here of all the solids. And if we can get through that, that would be a good place, a good place to stop. Okay, so let me uh, come to the board now. Okay, so this to me, and again, this came right from that guy, that guy I mentioned before, the guy, the um, science teacher up in Bozeman, Montana, but I think it's a good overview of just everything. So crystalline solids, there's five of them. We got molecular solids, ionic solids, and then under atomic solids, what we have here, and these are our uh, composite units of atoms. Okay, and under here we have the network solids. We have metals. And then we have the group 18 noble gases. So, so this, again, I got from the, the uh, Bozeman science guy, but I think it was a good overview of just everything that we've talked about with solids. And again, not a major point on our test, but it will be there. So crystalline solids were the category, molecular solids, ionic solids, so those would be compounds. And then atomic solids, which are just individual units, network solids, metals, noble gases. Okay, so these molecular solids are composed of molecules. They have a low melting point and boiling point. And they're poor conductors. Mr. Wood, can you move the screen down just a tiny bit? Yep. Is that better, Mason? Yes. Got it. Samples are ice and sugar. Okay, ionic solids are composed of cations and anions. They have a high melting point and boiling point. So that tells me they have a strong intermolecular force. As solids, they're non-conductive. As a solid, they do not conduct electricity. And as a solution, 
melted they conduct and we talked about that yesterday the reason for that is because the ions are free to move around when they're a solution or melted they're brittle An example of this is salt. Okay, and guys, it's 9.30, so I need to go ahead and stop. But I, I am going to continue this, and I'm going to, uh, again, post a, a, a link for a lesson. We will not Google Meet on Monday, but I will post a link for a lesson. And so I'll complete this, and this would be a good thing to have a picture of, and we're just going to keep marching through Chapter 10. We are about halfway through Chapter 10 right now. So we are really, to be honest with you, you know, considering all the, all the circumstances we've had, we're really doing pretty good, but we just have to really keep marching as we go. So, Okay, so I'm done. If you have a question, any questions? No, Mr. Wood. Okay, Tuesday we'll Google Meet again. Uh, if you got a question, email me, and uh, I will have a link for a lesson up on my calendar on Monday. So if not, have a good weekend, guys, and I will talk to you Tuesday. Thanks, Mr. Wood. Thank, Thank you. you. See you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Mr. Wood, I just wanted to check. Did Were you able to see that you got my quiz? I think I did, Allie. Just one second.